Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Phil Brooks. Uh, I oversee workforce development efforts uh, at the University City Science Center. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce the fifth session, I want to say, of what's the next move. Um, I actually didn't intend on doing five of them, but I think we're doing another one on July 7th as well. Really excited to have the guests on that I have today, but I do want to share some housekeeping before we get started. Um, as you know, with most Venture Cafe sessions, uh, if folks have questions, you can put them in the chat. Um, the way we're going to run this is I'm going to ask a few questions of our guests. We're going to talk a little bit about the workforce development program that we've been working on together. And towards the end, what we're going to do is, you know, ask folks if they just want to unmute themselves to ask questions. We'll review frequently asked questions about how the workforce development program started and things of that nature. And then we'll move rather, we'll move along with the half an hour that we have. So I'm going to stop talking on that part. Um, what I'll do um, towards the end is I'll put some other information in the chat, um, primarily just the link to the website with all the information on it. Um, and if folks have any questions beyond that, they can definitely email me and I can share my email uh, in the chat function as well towards the end. With all that said, um, I'd really like to introduce and it's my, pro uh, my, pro <laughs> my pleasure to have uh, Dara, who is, uh, uh, who is the executive director and CEO of uh, Eclos Institute. Um, I've known Dara for, I wanna say six or five or six years now. Um, she's an amazing human being. Um, she's a great thought partner and she's doing a really, really amazing work um, in her field of interest. So um, welcome Dara. Thanks, Phil. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm thrilled to be doing this. Uh, like Phil said, we've, we've known each other and been in the same kind of science and education circles for quite a few years now. Um, and it's always great to reach out and collaborate with him on any chance that I get. Um, as Phil said, uh, I work with, um, well, I'm, the, I'm one of the co-founders and the, uh, the CLO of Eclose Institute. Uh, we are a nonprofit, 501c3 public nonprofit that was founded in Philadelphia just last year. Um, and our program came out of a uh, program that was housed within Fox Chase Cancer Center and our citizen science piece and the um, pipeline piece became so large that we actually had to um, branch out. So I guess there's, there's worse places to be when it's science and education. But I'm so happy to be here. Awesome. Thank you. Um, great. We're actually going to continue with that same kind of question. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Um, and about Eclos Institute. I know you've had a journey and I, I always like listening to it, but you know, I wanna open it up to, uh, to our listeners to listen to your awesome story as well. Um, I think one of the things that, that um, connected me with Phil very early on in, in our working relationship is the fact that um, I'm from Philadelphia, born and bred, um, Philly School District all the way through, um, Temple University. Um, I'm actually a PhD student there currently. Um, which is do do that when you're young. Um, so I, I do that. So my roots are, are very, very deep for Philadelphia. Um, and it always goes back to when I got my undergraduate degree in science education, um, I said, someday I'm going to give back to the process and to the city that helped create um, the platform from which I, I took off from as a, a science educator. Um, and what made my weird journey um, a little bit more unique is that I not only at my age have over 35 years of science education experience. I have about 15 years of laboratory research experience, and that includes um, Princeton University, the Fells Institute for Medical Research um, and Cancer Research at the Temple Medical School, um, and Fox Chase Cancer Center in a research lab. So my blending um, was always uh, very key to um, what I saw myself doing and what I always wanted to do, and I dreamed, I'm like, wow, if I could teach lab courses, that would be great. And 20 years ago, people said, oh, nobody just does that. That's, you know, not, not something that's done. Um, and here I am doing uh, what might be my dream job. Um, and so I got to work with a, a great scientist, um, Alana O'Reilly, at uh, Fox Chase Cancer Center in 2008. And we used to joke, hey, wouldn't it be great if we created this institute, this system for training um, students, putting them into the pipeline in a different manner, doing it from a perspective of not just saying, I know all this about the content, but looking at the pedagogy as well, and really teaching them in an immersive environment. 
And in 2013, Immersion Science uh, came to be at Fox Chase Cancer Center. And we started with 16 students in a research lab. It's a dedicated uh, to re research lab. So we, we actually have 17% uh, of our students are published authors already. Um, and we had these 16 kids and we thought, wow, it's going to be great. And then all of a sudden we started training teachers and then we started going into classrooms and then we started doing outreach programs um, and it quickly blossomed into over 1,000 participants in 2019 and Fox Chase said hey guys this is like super awesome but we don't have an auditorium that big um, and so last year uh, eclose institute um, we closed so in in fruit fly land when you eclose it's when you come out of the pupa and you're no longer a little wormy looking thing you have wings and you can fly and that's what we did we decided to bust out and create eclose and make it an equity-based uh, program that allows students and adult learners to enter the stem pipeline be supported be encouraged and be retained and get jobs later on in some type of stem career Awesome. Yeah, thank you for sharing. I love hearing that story. I just wanted to hear it again. Just want to make sure everybody else could hear the wonderful work that you're doing. So like during during this pandemic, there's a number of challenges that's happening, um, challenges left and right. Um, and some of them are really large, some of them are small. Uh, what are what were some of the challenges that ECLOS had to face uh, specifically with the start of the pandemic and kind of like moving forward with with plans uh, in the future? <laughs> So when we started seeing this rolling out and we knew um, it was coming close to Philadelphia, we had already for our very first summer as eClose had lined up um, three institutions, including University of Penn um, at the uh, Abramson Cancer Center, Montgomery County Community College and Esperanza College, um, and some work with uh, the University Science Center, which I'm sure we'll get to in a bit. Um, and these are all going to be these amazing face-to-face -face immersive programs, just like what we had founded in that one little lab uh, all those years ago. And then the emails and the phone calls started coming in. We are no longer able to host uh, students or learners. Um, we had to close out our face-to-face -face program at Fox Chase. Uh, it was the first time we never completed a program. And Alana and I are really stubborn, uh, really, really stubborn. Um, and we decided that this wasn't going to beat um, the important science that had to take place because all of our participants are not just learning from us, they are contributing back to science, especially things like cancer research, um, and we're moving into virology and things of that nature. And so we put our heads together and I started calling up every salesperson I had ever worked with and sourcing materials. And I'm like, we can do this, we can ship laboratories out to people. Um, and so, what ended up happening is we created these labs in a box and we transformed the entire curriculum um, and made it um, accessible through a digital platform um, and we refused to let the science be stopped and we're going to reach as many people as we can this summer so we are kind of we took it on the chin and it was hard but we didn't have time to cry into our cereal so we just pulled up the bootstraps and, and kept going forward because you know, we're brand new. We had to keep the momentum this summer because you just don't want to lose that. And you don't want to lose the who could be the next scientist, who's going to be the next Nobel Prize winner, who's going to find a cure. So, so we're going to yeah. keep going. That's awesome. That kind of leads me into the next question of collaboration. So I've heard this word collaboration over and over again. I've been on a number of Zoom calls. I've, I've heard a lot of people talk about collaboration. I've seen some people actually do it. How has collaboration been with some of the challenges that you just mentioned um, with some of the other folks that you've uh, you've partnered with in the past or plan to partner with in the future? So for eClose, uh, collaboration is, is super core. Um, our program's not uh, run just by a scientist or just by a science teacher. Um, there's already a blending of, of careers and trajectories and um, ideals that kind of just blend harmoniously. So when we reached out to the people that had previously hosted us in face to face, we said, what do you want to do? How do you want to keep working together? Um, and we were humbled um, and flattered. And they said, well, if you say that you can do it, uh, we're going to keep going with you. Um, and, you know, that is a huge step into bringing two fields together that had been very disparate uh, leading up till now. Um, we 
actually, we, we never actually knew that we were workforce development until um, recent conversations with people about specifically about workforce development. Um, because when we said we're going to branch out and do this, we had science teachers that went through our training program, students that went through our training program, scientists that went through development sessions with us saying, we want in, we want to do this, we want to help the next group come through. Um, and so it meant a lot to bring these voices um, and this, this level of equity to the table because all of our programs are about um, culture and in terms of food and diet and how they affect certain diseases like cancer and diabetes and we need all those voices at the table so if it's not a big collaborative group of people then you're going to get one voice just shouting over and over again so we are happy that our name and our reputation for having a really solid system um, has kind of kept the doors open for us with our collaborators Yes, and I'd like to switch my hat from kind of like a moderator to kind of like a co-presenter <laughs> for this. Um, so uh, the Science Center is really new uh, with workforce development, um, only uh, a few years, but really um, the Science Center has been affecting workforce development and economic opportunities uh, throughout the Philadelphia region for the past 55 plus years. Um, with us being really new to workforce development, the real goal is identifying what the needs are from employers, um, but then actually taking those needs and transferring them into some type of actionable uh, steps. So over the past year, I've had a lot of conversations with employers. I've had a lot of conversations with fellow scientists like Dara. I've, I've I worked in city government uh, recently or uh, sometime last year, uh, lots of conversations with them, tapped into some of my, of my resource from uh, City Year Philadelphia as a nonprofit and really wanted to focus on a way to uh, connect young adults and adults to STEM opportunities. Uh, a quick 15 second, I guess, history on me is I grew up in West Philly uh, as well, uh, 52nd and Hazel. Um, I grew up in a single parent household. At one time I was in a shelter. Um, I had the privilege and the fortune of attending Gerard College, um, which of, uh, for folks who don't know is a boarding school in North Philadelphia. Left Philly altogether, got my biology degree in Massachusetts came back down here with the sole plans of doing uh, optometry school uh, first weekend um, un unfortunately couldn't pay for optometry school so that was a, a roadblock or just a barrier so to speak for me um, i ended up doing city year city government and now i'm here at the science center and within that whole kind of uh, experience and, and professional um, kind of context i i lead with my passion and for folks who know me really well my passion is the thing that drives me. If I'm not passionate about it, I'm not gonna put my heart and soul into it. I'm not gonna do anything with it that's really gonna lead to a, a huge impact. So because I am from the West Philadelphia region, uh, for folks on the call, again, who don't know me, um, this is my, my primary kind of focus. I definitely wanna make sure this succeeds. So um, like I mentioned, I had a conversation with Dara. I said, hey, Dara, we got this interesting thing we want to do. And she said, yes, Phil. Everything I said, she said, yes. So right now, what we're really focusing on is the best way to connect uh, adults to different roles and careers within STEM and tech companies. So we came up with uh, building an understanding of lab basics. So the Bulb Workforce Development Program. And for the folks on the call who have seen the flyer already, um, the flyer kind of lays out a number of things, which I'll go through right now. It lays out what the participants will, uh, will receive um, upon graduation and during that time. It kind of lays out some of the criteria that we're looking for for individuals who want to get into this field or are interested in this field. And then it really kind of lays out the deadline, which is next Monday um, at noon. So I'm glad we're having an opportunity to do this info session with all of you. Um, what I'd like to do now is just get into some of the frequently asked questions uh, about the application. And then what I'll do is I'll pass it back over to Dara to talk a little bit about what some of the lab kits actually kind of like include and what some of the curriculum will look like for some of the participants. Um, so uh, upon graduation, um, the participants will receive a laptop during the actual program. You'll receive a small stipend. It's not that it's not gigantic, but it's something. Uh, one of the biggest benefits that you'll receive is an opportunity to connect with a STEM professional within this field. So employers who actually currently work in some of the uh, some of the 
the lab environments or some of the lab and science and tech companies who will be a professional connector for you. I, I always use the phrase, it's not what you know is who you know, and you've heard that probably a lot uh, over your lifetime, but I'm a firm believer in this. Um, it's not what you know is who you know. And there's you know some proverbs and mentorships have been happening for thousands of years, but it holds true even to this day. Mentorship for students, mentorships for young adults, and mentorships for adults. Um, it doesn't matter how old you are, mentorship can unlock the door to a lot of potential, can unlock uh, the door to jobs, which is what we ultimately <laughs> want to have happen with, uh, with this moving forward. One of the other benefits is, in addition to the lab kit that you'll hear a little bit more about from Dara, you get to keep this lab kit. And I'm, I'm only partially jealous. I'm glad I'm <laughs> logistically putting jealous? everything together. I'm not partially jealous. <laughs> Are you super jealous? <laughs> I'm assembling these things and I'm like, I'm sending Phil pictures. I'm like, please sign up. Like, and every, every picture she sends me, I'm like, all right, I wish this was around when I was doing this, all, all that stuff. So one, one, of the, one of the biggest things that comes with this is, and I can speak as a parent, you know, summertime is really long. The opportunity to have a, a, a brand new kind of like lab kit with, and I'll let her explain all the things that's in it, um, but with all this really cool stuff um, can be really great for, uh, for your caregivers, or not your caregivers, your, your children. Mm. Um, I know if I had it, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I would, you know, continue to do things with my daughter in terms of science projects and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, that's something I think is really, really important. And I can speak just as Phil as a parent. Um, that's one aspect to this. We definitely want to make this as um, holistically awesome as possible. Mm -hmm. I will tell you what this program is not. It is not a full-time job. What this program is not, it's not a part-time job. And it's not an apprenticeship. Do we want those three things to be a part of this program and future iterations of this? Yes, absolutely. Right now, this program can be considered a reskill or a professional development. One, to help you gain additional skills on top of the workforce skills that you already have. And it kind of serves as the cherry on top when being attracted, when being, or being more attractive to employers. Right. It's not just we're, we're not trying to train lab technicians. We're trying to mm -hmm. skill people in a way that's going to be helpful. So when you're in front of that employer and you're applying for that administrative role or that accounting role or whatever role within a science and tech company, that's not necessarily a scientist. You can say, hey, I participated in this program. I know these four really amazing skills. I may not be in a lab all the time, but here's the benefit to some of the skills that I learned that can add to the actual program, um, which is why we definitely wanna connect with STEM professionals and mentors within this space mm -hmm. right now, because ideally my, my ultimate goal is for one of these mentors to pluck somebody out of the program and say, Phil, I'm sorry, I wanna hire this person right now. Great, fantastic, right? Um, at the end of the day, I wanna be able to say, hey, we've, do we've done all we could to make sure this individual had an opportunity to connect with a mentor um, get a laptop, which we're going to continuously promote uh, mm -hmm. the usage of technology, especially within these crazy times, um, and yeah. then ultimately make sure that folks know that there are opportunities within this space and slowly but surely build down that barrier between employee and folks mm -hmm. who are seeking employment within the life science space, within the STEM industry space, within tech and with all these things. There are a number of organizations doing fantastic work but there are so many, there's so many people that like some of these organizations are only hitting the tip of the iceberg. We're hitting the tip of the iceberg too, but we want to open that pie to make sure that more Philadelphians have this opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to transition over to Dara to talk a little bit about what's in the kit. So I see her leaning over. Are you about to pick up the kit? No. no. Oh my God. <laughs> you know what? If I had thought about that, but it comes in a shipping box. <laughs> okay. I gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> so this thing we have, we've had to play um, Jenga slash Tetris with all of the boxes because when we send it out, we want to make sure everything is secure and safe. Um, so mm -hmm. when, uh, and, and now, you know, now that the lid's off now. So when Phil and I started talking about this, um, <laughs> You know, when, when we started doing that, you know, Phil and I had these, these early uh, discussions because he's, he's been to uh, several versions of, of what we do in terms of, of eClose Institute programming. Um, and, and what the beauty of, of the intrinsic nature of it is, is it's flexible. 
Um, so you're going to hear a lot of educators and a lot of scientists, you know, older school would say there's one way of doing it and it has to be my way and my way is the right way. Um, but with me uh, and, and Phil will attest, I kind of walk in the door. I'm like, how can I help you have a good day? How can I address your personal goals and your needs for your program? Um, and so with Bulb, that's what we did. Phil was like, I want here. She sent me this big list and I'm like, okay, we have two weeks um, and we don't want everyone strapped to their computers for seven hours a day. So these are the things that I can do. So the things that we ended up pulling out of the list were very common lab techniques that are not just for a one-off use. The idea for a bulb is to, at the end of this two weeks, have a comfort with um, a knife of a wide range of, of things that are common in research laboratories around the world. Uh, so what we do in the very first week, um, and this is with all of our programs, it's just modified depending on time, is we call it boot camp. I mean, there's a lot of boot camps out there, but uh, there's things that you just have to know. Uh, we are going to talk, you know, conversions and metrics. A lot of people are like, what's the little U stand for? And we have to talk about microliters and what look like invisible volumes of liquid. And we say, no, no, it's really important to move those invisible volumes of liquid. Uh, we're going to get the people are going to get an, in the kit. The participants are getting a, set, a full set of micro pipetters. You don't walk into a research lab at any level, student, technician, postdoc, and say, by the way, you get a full set that you don't have to share with anybody. Well, now the bulk participants are getting a full set of, of micro pipetters to move those invisible volumes um, around. Um, they're going to get pipette fillers to move medium sized volumes. They're going to get glassware and plasticware in terms of cylinders, beakers, flasks. Um, they are going to get, and I'm dying, they're going to get a miniature <laughs> centrifuge and a miniature vortex mixer. I know, right, Letitia, <laughs> right? Right, okay, so she's on board. She wants to be on board. Um, and, and I've sent, like I said, I sent these pictures to Phil. I'm like, I'm crying. I'm so, I'm, I'm partially jealous. Um, so these are, and, and they're really, they are, science has great toys. I mean, there's no getting around that. I mean, we just have some really cool stuff. Um, but it's the basics for using all of these things. And we really want everyone to get comfortable with why are we using it? What are the purposes? Why does it make it faster? Because in science, time is of the essence. And you want to be able to move through data at a really rapid rate because somebody is waiting for those answers, whether it's a healthcare field, whether it's research, you are doing this work to help more people. So we have our boot camp and all the little cool toys. Oh, you're going to get a digital balance too. You're going to learn how to measure out uh, mass in terms of liquid volumes as well as solid volumes. Um, so there's, you're going to make solutions. You're going to do, learn how to do a serial dilution. Um, you are going to do DNA purification. Uh, we were able to source out um, fast uh, speed columns that are going to fit in your nice little micro centrifuge. You are getting an entire electrophoresis kit and a yes. new little power supply which is the cutest thing on the entire planet. Yes. Um, I'm having a hard time picking, it's like picking a favorite child at this point. <laughs> um, and then the piece de resistance is because they're, they're on their way. Uh, we are going to supply all of the participants of the 2020 bulb an inverted microscope. They are getting a microscope that is set up the way that many labs will use for tissue culture and for other specimen observations in the lab. Um, these are a little bit different than ones that you would have seen in high school, maybe that had the little, you know, objectives at the top. These are all underneath. It's going to allow us to have a really wide range of things uh, to look at through the microscope. And the microscope plugs into the computer that you see Science Center is supplying, and you can take images of anything that you are looking at. Oh my goodness. Wow. So we, like I said, as this started rolling out, and I'm like, I with my. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm excited about it. It's the funny thing is the best part if you've ever seen any Pixar Wally, the little robot, mm. the little player, he looks kind of like Eve. The microscope looks like uh. Eve from Wally. And it's so cute and it's so cool. And the fact that you can plug this in uh, when the DNA um, purification is done, you write it on the gel. We were able to uh, work with Edvotech, who uh, is now an official supporter of eClose Institute. Um, and we found little tiny light boxes, and you guys are going to be able to image the DNA samples on there. Um, so it's all of these things, but it's not just teaching the techniques to teach the techniques. 
all of these are wrapped within the concept of understanding how many pieces research, um, how many pieces of research go into finding the answers. Um, these are all going to be within the context of common diseases like cancer and diabetes, both of which oh, wow. uh, we know um, uh, statistically are high in areas of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. um, and we want the ownership of the yeah, science. To be there. I'm sorry, Caroline. I have family members that passed away with cancer. Yeah, it's um, this is one of those things in terms of a citizen science platform. The more people we get involved the more the communities that those people live in get involved. Um, and it's not just one scientist sitting at a lab bench. It can't be. We just don't have that kind of bandwidth. We need everybody involved and we need all those voices. And we need people to understand that I'm interested in this type of cancer because um, I'm a Mexican and I'm half Jewish and I have different disorders that run through my genetics. And so it's intrinsic. And I grew up eating certain types of food and learning certain types of culture. And I want to know how are these things playing against each other? So we have all of these amazing things in the kit and everything is designed around understanding um, where it fits in the bigger scheme of being a scientist or being a researcher or being in that STEM type of field. Um, so we are, and, and on the last day, everybody's going to be asked to kind of bring personal things that they want to examine under the microscope. So Phil, you might want to come in on, on the last Friday. Um, and we want to see, take a really deep look at the things that you interact with every day. Um, and then we take on a different appreciation for it. So there's a lot going on in there, um, and it's a wide, a, we're going to hit a wide range of things um, in two weeks, but we also um, have managed to uh, set up a collaboration now. We are um, an official uh, collaborator with Lab Exchange out of Harvard University, um, and we are going to have supportive videos, simulations, um, and basically another footprint guide that'll help walk all the participants through either before or after the actual lab techniques, which will be done during Zoom. All the instructors, we're gonna have um, equipment right in front of us. We're gonna be able to hold stuff up to the camera. We're gonna make you hold stuff up to the camera so we know everybody's on the same page. So we're gonna keep as much of that immersive interaction, that face-to-face -face component um, as live as we can. We're gonna have breakout rooms where people can work together and peer-to-peer -peer solve problems and not just an instructor relaying the information because in a lab, you have to know that you are a family in that lab and you have to be able to trust people and you have to be able to work with everyone. Um, and that is going to be essential in any type of, of lab or medical type of, of, of field that you're going to go into. Gotcha. We are coming down on the last few moments of our time together. Um, I definitely want to open it up for questions. Um, I saw some things throughout the chat, but if folks mm -hmm. are open to it, if you want to unmute yourself and ask questions uh, to me, ask questions to Dara, ask a little bit more specific questions about the Bulb Workforce Development Program, um, that's certainly your right to do so at this time. We have about two, two, three minutes left. I just want to ask about the in the STEM program, uh, is there an experiment on uh, fruit flies? Yes. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I don't have to worry about that because I come from a um, I come from a fruit fly lab. Uh, Drosophila is our model organism. The reason we use them is because um, cancer has been studied and modeled in fruit flies. Fruit mm. flies do not get cancer, but fruit flies can carry the same sequence of genes that humans do that would cause cancer in us in different tissues, oh, but really? allow us to look at cells or structures in the fruit fly. No live fruit flies will be coming out with the bulb program. We've, we've agreed to that. They will either yes. be frozen, dead samples, or they will just be parts of samples. We, so, we asked this question specifically on the application. <laughs> no <laughs> live fruit flies. They're not, they're not alive. <laughs> so no one can call us and be like, I saw, my husband does it all the time. Goes, There's a fruit fly. I'm like, that has red eyes. That's not mine. That's not the kind I work with. So they're, they're not mine. No. And we're not dissecting frogs or uh, sharks or anything, right? No. <laughs> oh, I did that in, in high school. <laughs> yeah, I don't. <Yeah. laughs> and that's, that's that. interesting that you bring that up. That's one of the things that I think we want to kind of break past that barrier. Like, I, I love science, but there's also a lot of people who've had traumatic, like legitimate traumatic experiences mm -hmm. with cutting frogs or being in a science mm -hmm. lab 
or they've said to themselves, well, science isn't for me. I don't have a science bone in my body, so I can't work for that science company or I can't work for that tech company or what have you. That's, that's not, that's, it's correct for them, but we want to have this program be kind of like the catalyst in science terms, so to speak, to get beyond that, to say, you know, you can be in administration, you can be a lab tech, you can do accounting, you can do some of these roles within some of these companies, and you don't have to be a scientist, you don't have to be a tech genius, right? You just have to have the grit, the will, and the knowledge that we want to be able to provide with this program, and mm -hmm. the connections, it's not what you know, it's who you know, to make sure folks have an opportunity to get to those places. My timer, yeah, says, <laughs> <laughs> my timer says that we're out of time. Out. Um, but if folks want to get in contact with Dara or myself, um, I strongly encourage folks to get on uh, the University City Science Center uh, website. Um, we have uh, up until Monday at noon for applications to be turned in. So the deadline is Monday, this Monday, June 29th, at noon. If you're interested, um, please uh, submit your application. There's a lot of interest. I will say there's only 12 spots available, um, which is a very small number, but we need to small need to start small to get bigger. Um, mm -hmm. It is my plan to have this done again before the end of the year. Um, but you know, that's just my plan. We'll see how this version goes. Um, and again, it's on the Science Center website. You've, uh, yeah, I think somebody just put it in chat. Um, if you Google it too, um, Workforce Development, Science Center, Bulb, um, all the information will be there for you to look at. Um, also, feel free to email me, uh, pbrooks at sciencecenter.org. Uh, Thank you all for your time, Dara. As you? always, it's a pleasure. Yeah, no, if anybody wants to get in touch with me, my email's all out there. I think I threw it out into the chat as well. Um, I'm happy to address, you know, other questions about the, the program or how it's going to be set up or just science in general. Um, I have a question. Hi, uh, my name is Leticia Borges, and uh, can I just say that the kit, the science kit, sounds like a dream come true? <laughs> because <laughs> as a college student myself, we have to share all those things. Um, but my question is, uh, this mentor, the science mentor that we're going to be, to have, is it going to be something that we're assigned to somebody, or is, or is the person going to be teaching mm -hmm. us that's going to be our mentor? That's a great question, and this will be the last question because I'm thinking mm -hmm. getting the wrap up, the wrap up, uh, wrap up right. tune. Um, so so we, we we really want to be able to pair the mentor and their kind of expertise with what the participants are interested in. So once the participants are chosen, we'll give them a whole package of information that we'll need for them to fill out. One of the things in that package will be, you know, what are some of the things that you're interested in? What, what, what are some of the roles that you're interested in? And then the mentors that we will secure, what we'll try to do is kind of do a mentor matching situation where if an engineer or if a scientist is really great at X, Y, and Z, um, and they have experience in something that you've identified as something that you want to do, what we'll try to do is match that way. They will not be instructing you. What we'll do is we'll try to inform them and say, hey, this person is going through this program. Here's how we would like for you to engage them. The idea is to have them engage beyond the two week time span. So we wanna be able to build that, you know, build that into the kind of uh, the expectation for the mentor, mm -hmm. um, if that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Perfect. Have a good night, everyone. Sure, Thank you, you for too. tuning in. Thank you, you so much, Dara and Phil. Um, and I'm going to put links in the chat if anybody would like to head over to um, our social networking space um, in Remo or see um, other programming that's going on for tonight. We have a really, really great lineup. Um, but thank you so much to, to Dara and Phil for um, coming out to talk about Bulb. Um, definitely um, get in touch with them um, if you have any further questions. Um, and thank you guys so much for coming out tonight. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you Have a good night, everybody. You too. Bye-bye.